Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, The Millennial Investor, and today we're going to be talking about bonds. Now bonds is usually something that we don't talk about in my videos. I've only mentioned it one time on my channel previously, but those of you that are interested in looking for a little bit of diversification and looking to protect yourself against the next market crash, if we go ahead and look here and we search SPY, which is the S&P 500 Spider ETF, you can see the five-year chart. We have recovered quite substantially from this recent recession. So if the stock market is going to take another tumble, a lot of bond ETFs are going to thrive. Just to name off a couple that we want to look at today. So let's just compare this to some bond ETFs like EDV, which is up 53% in the last five years. BGLT, which is up 37.9% over the last five years. If we look at iShares long-term treasuries, which is TLT, they are up 40.6% over the last five years. You see the trend. And then we're also going to be looking at one corporate bond ETF, which I want to show the difference between a corporate bond ETF and a long-term treasury bond ETF. The five-year performance over that is still up 7.43%, and that is not counting dividends on any of these or interest, whatever you like to refer to this to. But those of you that watch my videos and do not know who I am and what I do, my name is The Millennial Investor. My real name is Jordan. I invest in very safe blue chip companies. I am a, an investor. I am not a trader. Many of these companies I intend to own for several, several several years maybe even decades out into the future so so if you watch this far into the video and you decide that you want to help me out and benefit my channel just a little bit go ahead and use my successful referral link right down there below it's in the description of all of my videos and speaking of the description of all of my videos there are several links down below that you can use not just for m1 finance but things like credit card referrals and help with your portfolio but using this link gets both of us ten dollars just for signing up and we've had 16 people so far thank you the 16 that have used that link but let's go ahead and get that number to 17 18 19 and even try to get it up to 20 so if you're interested in signing up through m1 finance after i show you this video and how bonds work go ahead and use that link down below in the description but anyways let's go ahead and get started with the video when we hit research tab here when we go ahead and click funds and then we're going to click bonds then we're going to click domestic. We're not going to mess with anything international. I just want to focus on United States bonds right now. And then we have two to choose from that I want to focus on. We want to focus on the two main ones right here, which is corporate and government. Now, the difference between these two is corporate and government are very different performers when it comes to stock market recessions and stock market bull markets. So the one that I wanted to pick out, which looked interesting to me, is I picked SPIB. I like spider ETFs. So let's look at its performance over the last five years. We can see that the stock has went up 7.43%. Now comparing that to Spider ETF SPY, which is the S&P 500, which is an equities. This is not a bond ETF. This is owning stock. So basically the stock market has went up 43.41%. Meanwhile, the SPIB, the Spider ETF for bonds, has only went up 7.43%. Now this is a corporate bond ETF. This is not a treasury bond, so there are no governmental bonds here. And we're gonna go to SPIB Investor Relations and we're gonna look up some basic facts and some information about this corporate bond ETF that you might need to know. Now, here are some of the bonds that are included inside of this ETF. If we go ahead and click holdings here and it takes us down here, you will see a lot of companies that are probably familiar to you. You can see we have CVS Health Corp, T-Mobile, Goldman Sachs, Capital One Financial, Wells Fargo and Company, JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs Group, AT&T, Bank of America Corporation, and Berkeley's Bank PLC. So you can see the largest holding only makes up 0.25%. If we go here to this tab and scroll down and look at the holdings, it has almost 4,000 holdings. 4,000 holdings spread out between all U.S. bonds, 82% of it anyways, and then 4% being in convertible, 13 being in international bonds, and then 0.32% being in cash. But basically, almost the entire fund is made up strictly of United States corporate bonds. And now a lot of these are very high investment grade bonds, and we can get it separated by categories here and sectors. And we have 56.34 in corporate industrial, 38.25 in corporate finance, and then 5.42 in utilities. If we scroll down here, we can look into investment grades. Now, this is a very high investment grade bond ETF. This is not one that is investing in risky companies, companies that are struggling. This is investing in companies that are doing very good for the long term and are not going to struggle financially speaking. You can see a lot of the names here, a lot of them being financials. CVS, T-Mobile, Goldman Sachs, Capital One, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, AT&T, Barclays. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of the top ten are strictly financials. It wants to focus on companies that is not going to have any trouble investing in their bonds, and they're going to be able to pay back those bonds without fail every single time. And this is why their ratings are so high. You can see the mass majority makes up between A and then BAA, with 42.97% being an A, and then BAA making up 49.15%. And then it's spread out a little bit between higher and lower. But basically the main focus here is, an A rating is pretty good, and even a BAA is not that bad, so it is still a very high investment grade corporate bond ETF. And we see the link for these bonds. Now those of you that don't know, basically what this is is that you're essentially buying debt. So when companies run into trouble and they want to finance things. So let's go ahead and give an example. So like a company that is struggling right now is CCL, Carnival Cruise Lines. Carnival Cruise Lines has had a lot of troubles over this last year or so, and they have made some huge moves in the bond markets, paying absolutely enormous coupon rates to try to cover their short-term expenses. So what they will do is they will offer some bonds that pay, I believe the ones that they offered was 13% coupon rate. They'll pay you 13% to essentially buy their debt to fund their operations temporarily. Now, they set a maturity date and they set it by how many years out they wanna pay that back. They'll say, okay, we'll pay that five years from now. We'll pay you back all your money, your principal, five years from now. In the meantime, the money that you loan us out, we'll pay you 13% in interest or the coupon rate. So this is how long you have to wait to get your principal back or the money back in these corporate bond ETFs. And this is how it's split up between all these different companies. Now, a risky company like CCL, Carnival Cruise Lines, that is having a lot of struggles, a lot of issues right now, is not a corporate bond that this ETF is focused on. This isn't focused on very high investment grades. So like one of the ones it listed was a company that I own, JP Morgan. This is the largest bank in the world. They're a $283 billion company. They pay dividends. They have share buybacks. They are extremely profitable. Billions and billions of net income every single year. And their corporate bond ETFs are extremely safe. They're being helped out by the Fed. They have massive amounts of profits. They have tons of money in reserves. These are corporate bond ETFs that are 99% likely that they are going to be paid out when their extended date hits that day. But now we have an idea of how that works. Let's look at it at a typical date of how far these bonds are priced out. So about 10.09 or about 10% of these bonds are one to two years out, two to three years, 14.77%, five to seven years, 20.46, three to five years is 27.97, and then seven to 10 years, 26.38. So the mass three groups are these right here, which fall between three and 10 years. And that's typically what you usually see with a lot of corporate bond ETFs. They usually try to price them out. I would say typically if I had to pick an average, maybe five to seven years, usually five years if I had to guess. And that will give them plenty of time to fund their short-term operations and then focus on other things. And then also two little teeny tiny slices here with 0.36 making up 10 to 15 years and then a tiny slice with zero to one year. Now the question you might be wondering is, how would I know if I wanted to invest in a corporate bond ETF or a long-term treasury bond. You can see 7.43% is a performance over five years for corporate bonds, but if we look at something like VGLT, which is long-term treasuries, the performance is significantly better. Now, the reason why I like long-term treasuries so much better than any corporate bond ETF, regardless of it being investment grade or any kind of dividend yield that it could offer, is the safety and security of a long-term treasury bond, specifically the 20 plus long-term treasury bonds. So if we click research here, we click funds, we click bonds, we go back to domestic, we don't want to look into foreign, and then we click government this time instead of corporate. And let's go ahead and close the SPIB. And then I have two pulled up here, which is VGLT and TLT iShares, 20 year bond. So if we click long term, so we're going to focus on long term. The reason we're going to pick long term is we do not want to focus on bonds, treasury bonds that are under 20 years. So like, for example, if we look at the one to three year treasury bond, People that are trying to invest in these bonds to protect themselves against a market crash, these one to three year treasury bonds do not offer the kind of safety and security for the long term if we were to go into, say, some kind of horrible depression. So that's why they're only up 2% on the year. If you look at the next one, the seven to 10 year bonds, they're only up 16.34%, not much better than that of the corporate bond ETFs. But if you click the long-term tab and then you sort by long-term treasury bond, 20 years and plus, if we click the 20-year treasury bond, you can see TLT is up over 40% over the last five years. Year to date, it is up 24.34%. So this is why you wanna focus on long-term treasury bonds. 
when people are scared about the stock market crash, let's go ahead and look and see when this started rising. So this started rising right about the turn of the new year. This was about $135, $140 a share. And then the moment the stock market crash started happening, this skyrocketed. Let's go ahead and compare this to the S&P 500. You can see at the beginning of the year, this started the new year right about here. We had a little bitty peak up. And then ever since then, it's been a massive crash down. And we're starting to recover now. And if we go back to TLT here, you can see an inverse correlation. As the stock market crashed, we see the turn of the new year here. It went up a little bit. And then the stock market started to crash around this time. And then this bond ETF just skyrocketed. And it's been sky high ever since, just floating around this $160, $170 range. Today, it is up a little bit at right at $165 a share. But if we go back to funds, we click bonds, we click domestic, we click government, and then we click long term. There's a few to choose from here, eight specifically. The three that I want, that I mainly like, that I want to focus on is VGLT, EDV, and TLT. Those are the three that I like. And the two that I want to focus on today is VGLT and TLT. Now, the cool part about both of these is they do not pay quarterly or annually. You can see at the end of every month, they will pay you dividends. And the same thing with VGLT here. If we pick the year chart, it pays every single month at the end of the month. And that will pay you steady dividends every single month as monthly income. Now, the reason why I like both of these is that they pay monthly. They have pretty low expense ratios and they have great dividend yields. Now, the one I fo want to focus on specifically and that I would recommend is VGLT because it has an expense ratio of 0.05%, but meanwhile, TLT has an expense ratio of 0.15%. So three times higher than that of VGLT Vanguard's ETF. But I'm going to pull up both of these and just show you the extreme similarities between these. This is Vanguard's Investor Relations page, and this shows their ETFs. And the same thing here, this is iShares Investor Relations page, and this shows their ETFs. So if we go here and we look at Vanguard's ETS for VGLT, and we look at the Portfolio and Management tab, you can see here no investment grade. It is just focused on short, medium, long-term treasury. That is all it is focused on. You can see the number of bonds it holds is 56. It has a year to maturity of 1.3%, 3.1% average coupon, and the effective maturity here, this is the main one I want to focus on, is 25.4 years. The effective maturity on average is 25 and a half years out for an average treasury bond. You can see 99.4% makes up the ETF and it is 0.6% BAA and it makes up 100% of the fund and you can see 100% of the treasury ETFs there. If we sort by distribution of issuer, it is 100% treasury bonds and distribution of credit quality or the credit rating, the US government makes up 99.4% and then less than 1% makes up BAA credit rating. You can see they have a couple bonds that are a little bit older here that they've held for a while. Less than 1% makes up five to 10 year. 10 to 20 years makes up about 10%, but the big chunk that I wanna focus on, which is what I think is the best to hold, 88.9% makes up between 20 and 30 year treasury bonds. Now, those of you that don't know, the longest that a treasury bond can go out that the government offers is 30 years. So you're not gonna really find any bonds over 30 years in the United States. You can find them in foreign countries, specifically in Europe and the United Kingdom and places like that. But in the United States, the farthest that you will see is a 30 year treasury bond. You can see that the average term is 25.4 years for the term, and it has a yield to maturity of 1.3 and an average coupon of 3.1 mixed in between 56 different bonds. So how does that compare to TLT? It is extremely similar, and we'll go ahead and look at the differences and the similarities between these. The average term for this is 25.9 years, which is very close to that of the effective maturity for Vanguard's. It is just slightly longer. The average weighted coupon is 2.9% compared to Vanguard's 3.1%. Its average yield to maturity is 1.33 compared to Vanguard's 1.3, so about identical. And you can see that its top holdings here are all U.S. Treasuries. You can see that its largest holding is 3% coupon rate, 2.5, 2.5, 2.83, you get the picture. And the expiry dates on these, you can see it is now the year of 2020. This expires in 28 years, 26, 26, 23 years, 29 years, 28 years, you get the point. And they have 0.64% in cash or cash and cash equivalents, so they can buy more treasury bonds with the cash sitting on hand. You can see the geography tab here, all of them are in the United States, whatever's not in cash. 
in the maturity here, they have less than tenth of a percent in 15 to 20 years, and all of it is basically in 20 plus years. The credit quality is AAA rated at 99.36%, and then the rest is cash. So very similar to VGLT, and VGLT and TLT are very similar stocks, and they're going to perform very similar in the long term. So which would I would recommend, and which do I think is the better pick for the long run? You can see the performance compared to 40.6 versus VGLTs. 39.7%. So in my opinion, I think I would go with VGLT just because it has a lower expense ratio and I do have a bias towards Vanguard because I think Vanguard has extremely well run ETFs in general. But overall guys, I think that you're not going to mistake with either of these two. Honestly, any of these eight in this section are probably not going to be bad picks. But in my opinion, VGLT and TLT are the ones that you want to go with. They are very well run. They are very safe for recessions. And the great part is if we do see another market crash, if we search SPY here, let's go ahead and look how the SPY is performing this year. You can see that we are almost fully recovered with everything that is going on, with the economy tanking, with the coronavirus taking place, with riots being held in the streets, with tons of political issues and a presidential election happening this year. So many different issues have been going on with professional sports being canceled and people rioting and people not spending as much money and losing their jobs and all different types of economic issues. With all the problems and issues going on in 2020, it is insane to believe that the stock market is nearly at an all-time high. The peak here for the S&P 500 is about $338, $339, and right now we're at $305, so... So very high considering all that is going on. But overall, guys, regardless of whether or not you think that a stock market crash is coming, if we hit all time highs in the stock market and we recover just fine, these bonds will likely decrease in price quite substantially because they are so overpriced right now. Treasury bonds are at rock bottom yields and at sky high prices. So the upwards potential is not very high now that these have been priced in so well. That said, if we do see a huge downturn in the market, these can go even higher. They can even go to negative treasury yields in the actual market, and these bond ETFs will skyrocket. This $100 VGLT ETF will probably go to $110, $120, maybe even $130, depending on how hard the market would crash. But overall, guys, that's my opinion on bond ETFs and if you should buy them. I think if you want to buy a small percentage of them now, it is not a bad decision to make, but I would buy a small weight in your portfolio if you're wanting to do that. Because I think buying them now, I think even with all that is going on, equities do have a substantial benefit towards them being able to grow better in the long term. But overall, guys, that's my opinion on bond ETFs. And I'll give you guys a quick update on my portfolio. I do have some great winners in the portfolio with a couple of losers. Discover Financial, Whirlpool Corporation, Apple Incorporated being some of the biggest winners in the portfolio. And then the biggest losers in the portfolio you can see right here. If we sort by a time-weighted return versus a money-weighted return, that's the one I like to look at. The portfolio on a time-weighted return is 11.76%. And you can see the biggest gains here based off of cost basis. And you can see my cost basis there versus the actual price. And then if we do it off of a money weighted return, which is what M1 Finance uses, I am up 17.1%. 320.4 ones in total gains, $298.11 coming from market gains, and then $22.30 coming from earned dividends. And our portfolio value sits at about $2,622.58. And you can see here, I did just do a recent purchase last week. And if we sort by dividends only, you can see some of the dividends that I've received recently. Now, I know a lot of them are not very large to start out, but I'm growing them every single week and every single month as I invest more and more into my portfolio. And in funding history, I have funded my portfolio $2,175 and the portfolio is over $2,600. So that is quite nice for dividend income 2020. Those of you that watch my videos know that I keep this tracker. On Friday's video, I will be updating this. I, these numbers are not updated. I have more passive income than this, but this shows my annual dividend income on a monthly basis, how much it increases. This is the actual dividends that I received on a month by month basis. My June income is actually a little bit higher than this. I think it will be over $10. And then my portfolio value is tracked every single month as well to see how that correlates with my monthly and annual dividend income. But overall, guys, if you made it all the way to the video, thank you guys so much that have watched this far through. 
If you want to use my successor referral link, please do that. It helps me out with the channel a ton. Like I said, the link is in the description. You can get $10 for signing up and I will get $10 as well, which would help me fund this portfolio a ton, especially with the issues that we've seen recently with my hours being cut down and the pandemic taking place with businesses and jobs being lost. But there are other links in the description as well, included help with your portfolio, credit card referral links, brokerage referral links, all different types of information that you need to know about me. So just go ahead and check out the description. You can find out tons of helpful information that you might need to know. But overall, guys, if you're interested in any questions about me or the the market or bond market go ahead and leave a comment down below and i'll answer any questions that you guys like to have i also have an email address down there so if you want to ask me any questions personally i can message you directly and we can answer any questions that you have there but i will be funding this portfolio some more this week before friday's video but overall guys thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time